So I've decided to take a little re little time to review for factoring instead of moving on. So with factoring, I, I created this little chart here for kids to kind of think through the process of what you do first, okay? So the first thing you want to do is look for the greatest common factor, okay? So that means what can be divided out of all the terms, okay? Next, you want to look how many terms it has. If it has two terms, a binomial, three terms, a trinomial, or four terms. So if it has two terms, we're going to either look for the if it's a difference of squares or if it's a sum or difference of cubes. Okay, so we have different methods for those things. With three terms, with a trinomial, we're going to set up two parentheses and put the numbers in there until, we, until it works out for us. And with four terms, we're going to use something called grouping. Factor by grouping. Okay, so if we look here, uh, first start here, greatest common factor. I can take out a y squared out of both. So greatest common factor is sort of like the reverse of the distributive property. So if I take a y squared out, I'm left with 9y to the third. Taking a y squared out of there, I have just one left. If you distribute it through, that gives you 9y to the fifth plus 1y squared. Okay. We notice we have two terms left here. Okay, is it a difference of squares? Okay, nope, it's a sum, so it's not a difference. Is it a sum of cubes? Okay, it's a sum. One is a perfect cube. One times one times one is one. But nothing times itself three times will give you nine y to the third. We can get y to the third, y times y times y, but not like three times three will give you nine, but we need it third, three times for a cube. Okay, so we're done. Okay, here we have three terms. First thing we look for is greatest common factor. So it looks like we can take a 6 out of all of them. There's no x's in this one, so we can't take x's out. But we can take y to the third out. So then we're left with, okay, we need an x squared and a y. Okay, so when I multiply this together, it gives me this. Oh, I can't take a 6 out. I can only take a 3 out. Okay, take a 3 out, which makes 2x squared here, right? Okay, if I take a 3 out, I'm left with 3x y, take a 3 out here, 6, and y squared is left, okay? And we look here, three terms, three terms, I would set up the parentheses here and try and work this out. I'll tell you, it just doesn't work for this case, okay? This one here, we have three terms. Looks like I can divide a 7 out, and I can take m squared out of all of them, and I can take an m plus 1 out of all of them. Okay, and then what's left after I divide those out? So 7 times 2, uh, I need another m squared to give you m to the 4th, and it already has the m plus 1, minus 7 times 4 is 28, m squared times 1m gives you m to the 3rd, and I already have the m plus 1, minus, and looks like all is there, so just minus 1. Okay, so that's the idea of the greatest common factor. Once again, there's three terms. You could look here, but it won't factor. Okay, next one is called grouping, factor by grouping. So what we're going to do is we're going to group the first two together here and then the second two together. Okay, so we group the first two together. What can I divide out of both of those? I can take an M out. I'm left with P squared plus 7. And then the second two group together, I can take a 3 out. And I'm left with p squared plus 7. Okay? Now, if you think about multiplying something through, I'm just going to make this up here. Say I have m plus 2 times uh, p plus 3, right? Okay? Notice this m has to be distributed to both of those things, right? So this m... So what's being distributed to, to this p squared plus 7? Well, this m is being distributed to p squared plus 7, right? So m is being distributed through to both of them. And also the 3 is also being distributed to the p, plus, p squared plus 7, okay? So you can think about this, m being distributed to both, and the 2 being distributed to both. Same idea here. So for this method to work, these two, number, these two things have to be the same, okay? So that makes one of your factors. And then those both get multiplied by through that. Okay, so there it's factored. Okay, now if you look at this one, um, this one is not quite in the right order because I can't take anything out of these, right? 
So if I rearrange these, okay, so I'm going to put this one, um, this one here with it, and then I'll have the negative a y squared and the a z. Okay, most of the time, if I ask you to do this, it'll be in the right order, but you'll see how this works out. So if I factor this out, I can factor a 2 out here. And I have y squared minus z. Notice here I can take out a negative a, which makes that a positive y squared and a negative z. Okay, so I had to rearrange those so that I could get those two things to be the same. So we have the, we have the y squared minus z. And what's being distributed to those? The 2 is being distributed to that. And the negative a is also being distributed to that. OK. So the next one here, group them. So the first two, I can take out a 2x squared. I'm left with x plus 1. And here I can take out a negative 1 and be left with, well, that's a 4. Sorry, this would be 2x plus 1. If I take a negative 1 out here, then I have 2x plus 1. Now, why did I take a negative 1 out there? Because I needed these two things to match. Okay? So, we have 2x plus 1, and what's being distributed to the 2x plus 1? The 2x squared is being distributed through, and the minus 1 is being distributed through. So, factor by grouping is kind of a nice way to factor there, especially if there's four terms. Okay? Next one, if it's a trinomial, Okay, with three terms, with three terms, we're going to set up our parentheses and just kind of think it through with trial and error. So x squared, okay, thinking about how I multiply th stuff through. x times x gives me the x squared. Now, at the end here, I need a negative 6, right? Outside, inside will give me this. And then this one times this one has to give me negative 6. So what's going to give me negative 6? Well, it might be negative 6 and 1, or 6 and negative 1, or 3 and negative 2, or 2 or negative 3. Right? Okay. So if I need a negative 1 out of it, I think it's going to be this. Right? So if I x times x is x squared, that'd be 2x minus 3x. 2x minus 3x is minus 1x. And then that times that is negative 6. So we're good. Now, if you can't think it through and you just put numbers in, multiply it out. If it doesn't work, put other numbers in. Okay? So with this one here, once again, we first start, is there, is there a greatest common factor? No greatest common factor. There are three terms. Three terms, we're going to set up our two parentheses. Okay, now, for 6p squared, it might be 6p times p, or it might be 3p times 2p. Okay, so if we think through this, okay, at the end, I need it to multiply to be negative 5. So what times what's negative 5? Well, it's just negative 5 and 1, or 1 and negative 1 and positive 5, right? It has to be one of those two things. So let's just try this one real Let's see. So if I put a positive 5 and a negative 1 there, that'll give me 30p minus 1p is not negative 7, right? So that's not right. Let's switch it around. Put the 5 there and the 1 there. 1 positive, 1 negative, right? So that'd be 6 minus 5. Still not 7, right? So I don't think this one's going to work. Okay, let's try this one. Let's put the minus 1 here and the plus 5 here. Okay, so this will give you negative 3, and this is 10. So 10 minus 3 is positive 7, but I need negative 7, so I'm close. That means all i got to do is this. Now I have still have the negative 5 at the end, right? So I have 3 minus 10, which would be negative 7, so we got it. Okay, next one here. Okay, notice we always want to take out the greatest common factor first, right? So is there a greatest common factor? Yep, okay, so the greatest common factor, I can take out a 8y first. Gives me 2y squared plus 3y minus 2. Okay, now there's three terms. So three terms, I want to set up these and see if they work. So 2y squared will be 2y times y. And the only way to get this is negative 2 and 1, or, two, or negative 1 and 2, right? One or the other. So I need it to be 3. So it's probably going to be a 1 positive, 1 negative. So it's probably going to be 4 minus 1. So 2, okay, so that'd be 4 
minus 1 gives you the 3. Okay, so there's our, our completed factors. Number 10, greatest common factor, there isn't one. So I set up my two parentheses. Okay, so um, you could try 4y and y, or you might see it's 2y and 2y, right? Both of those will give you 4y squared. And if you think through it there, um, 6 could be 6 and 1 or 2 and 3. Now, if you think about the signs, if this has to be a positive, it has to be a, either a positive times a positive or a negative times a negative, right? We'll give you 6. But I know the outside and the inside have to add to be negative 11. Therefore, the both are going to have to be negatives. Okay, so if I put, just do trial and error here, six, 6 and 1, that'd be 24 and 1 and give you 25. Negative 25 doesn't work. Okay, let's take the 6 and the 1 and plug, change it around. That'll give me 6 and negative 6 and negative 4, give me negative 10, not negative 11. Doesn't work. Okay, so I could then try the 2 and the 3. So it'd be negative 12 minus 2. Nope, doesn't work. Switch those around. That'd be negative 8 and negative 3. 8, negative 11. There we go. We got it. So we've found the right ones there. Okay, now if that didn't work, then you could go and plug those numbers in there and see if those work. Okay. Okay, so this one, this one could be a couple different things. Okay, it might be 4p times 4p. It could be 8p times 2p. It could be 16p times 1p. Okay, so any number of those will work. This is kind of something called a perfect square trinomial. I, I just recognize it because I've done it so much. But um, for 25, probably have, it's 5q times 5q. What are your signs going to have to be? Okay, it's going to have to be negative and negative to give you a outside, inside to give you a negative here, and this times this to give you a positive, right? So let's just 5q five, five and 5q, see how it works. So that gives you that. The outsides give you this. Insides, negative 20 and negative 20 give you negative 40. So we found the right one. Okay, this one here, no greatest common factor, right? Okay, 13th prime. So it might be 6z times 1z or 3z times 2z. Okay, this is the fourth, though. So squared, 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 squared. Okay, so those will give you 6z to the fourth. Now to get negative 5, it's either negative 5 and 1 or negative 1 and 5. Okay, we got to think about how we're going to get 13 here. Negative 13. So that's not going to be a 5, right? So let's try the negative 1 and a positive 5 there. So that would be Negative 6 plus 5, nope, not going to work. And 5 and 1 won't work either, okay? So let's try the next one down here. Let's put the 5 here and the 1 there. So that would be 15 minus 2, which would be 13. I need negative 13, though. So all I need to do, switch those signs around. Now I have negative 15 plus 2, which gives you the negative 13. Okay? So those trinomials are going to... Kind of take some trial and error sometimes. Okay, the difference of squares. Okay, so you have to look for this pattern, a difference, and they have to be perfect squares. Like, for example, 3 times 3 is 9, and 2m times 2m gives you 4m squared. So we got difference of two squares. Okay, so these are easy. It's just 2m plus 3 and 2m minus 3. So if we check it, that times that gives you the 4m squared. Minus 6m plus 6m gives you the m's cancel out. And then that times that gives you negative 9. Okay, same thing here. 25, 256k to the, to the fourth. Okay, so you can think about this as a square root. Square root of 256 is 16. So this is 16 times 16. 16k squared times 16k squared. One positive, one negative, because we want the insides to cancel. And the square root of 625 gives you 25. It'd be 25m squared 
times 25 m squared. Okay. Now this one here is a little bit different because we have this and this, right? But we still have a difference. And this is something that's squared. And this is something, okay? So I can say this is 2c squared, right? They're both things are squared. So it'd be this minus this and this plus this, okay? So a plus 2b plus the 2c. And then a plus 2b minus the 2c. Okay, so same kind of pattern there. A, there's one plus that and one minus that. Now the one back in, uh, in Algebra 2 that gave people the hardest trouble is probably the sum difference of cubes. So if it's, you have to kind of know this pattern. If it's some number cubed plus some number cubed, it's going to be a pattern of a plus b. This sign is always the same here. And then it's a squared this is plus, this is minus AB plus B squared. And if it's A to the third minus B to the third, the pattern would be, notice the only change is the sign, it's A minus B and A squared plus AB. Okay, so it just changes the signs there. So we have to think here. What number is being cubed here? Okay, the X is being cubed here. And what's being cubed here? It's three. 3 times 3 times 3 is 27, okay, so that's being cubed. So we have our a and our b here, and that's a plus there. So it's going to be x plus 3, a plus b, right? And then x squared minus 3x plus b squared, 3 squared is 9. Okay, next one here. This is m to the third, so our m is what's being cubed there. And what's being cubed here, okay? If you can, if you remember how to do cubed root, it's, it's in Desmos, okay? So the cubed root of 64, or you can think what times itself three times will give you 64, and that's 4 times 4 times 4, and then the n to the third would just be an m, okay? So this one's a minus, so it fits this pattern. So it's going to be m minus 4n, okay, and then m squared plus this times this, 4mn, plus b squared. So if I square this, that would be 16n squared, okay? Once again, you have to think, is anything cubed here? So what's being cubed to give you 8? 2 times 2 times 2. What cube gives you q to the sixth? That'd be q to the third. Sorry, squared. Okay, 125 is 5 times 5 times 5. And p to the third times p to the third times p to the third is p to the ninth. Okay, now pay attention here, especially when we square these here. Okay, so we have the a plus the b. So 2q squared plus... 5p to the third. Okay, now when I square this, remember I, I have to square the whole thing, both things here. So it'd be 4q to the fourth minus, multiply them together, be 10q squared p to the third plus, I have to square the whole thing, 25p to the sixth. Okay. This is 2x minus 1 cubed plus 8. Okay, so think about it's a sum of this cubed and this is being cubed. So our a, what's being cubed here? The 2x minus 1. And what's being cubed here? 2 times 2 times 2. Okay, so we're thinking about this pattern right here. So let's see a plus the b times a squared, okay, so now to square this, that's 2x minus 1 times 2x minus 1, which would be 4x squared minus 2x, minus 2x and minus 2x is minus 4x, and plus 1, minus this times this, which would be 4x minus 2, 
plus the b squared and plus 4. That one's a little tougher. If you have to rewatch it, please do so. Okay? So that's our factoring review.